Hello and welcome back. I'm Darcy Darkness. This is Confessions from the Dark Side and how are you all in this wonderful community? I'm going to get the disclaimer out of the way first because it's me. I am so full of so much adult content. Some of you may think this is unnecessary and some of you may think that this isn't needed. If you are one of those people, then thanks for checking me out. I'll say this only once. If you can't stand the hate, then get the fuck out of my kitchen. Now, for everyone else who likes what we have here, then regular scheduled program will continue. Shall we get started and are we ready? So, today's Confessions from the Dark Side presents remakes of reboots. Is a thing? Is it a thing? Stop, look, and listen. Grab yourself a drink, a snack, and let's get comfy to hear about the remake of the reboot. Yes, I said that. Have you ever heard of the cheaper, less known movies that have the same plot but don't get the same coverage or attention? Used to go straight to video back in the day. I thought this was done with, especially in horror and thriller. It seems not. Let me take you on a dark mystery tour of where we're going to discuss the movies I'm talking about here, which again, both out this year, both cover similar, if not exact, plot hole twists, with the same input and outcome. Yet, one is tipped to be the reboot of an old class classic iconic classic that has already lost the original fans as they attacked everyone with a different view and then tried to backtrack as the m track as the movie is clo gets closer to its release to try and held us again under a false narrative by mr rupert sanders so let's discuss the topics and will this be the start of a new cycle another part of the new cycle that we're seeing from 2024 onwards or will this be the calm before the storm testing the waters we will see let's discuss and remove the movies in question shall we let's get into it join me dusty darkness are you sitting comfortably so what are we covering today so this is actually a review on a movie called sunrise but there is another topic an underlying topic underneath when I was watching this film last night with my husband, I was like, huh, this sounds familiar, far too familiar, really familiar. And it's because this movie has already been made and probably been made a few times, but this story is very unique and is going to clash with a movie that's out on the 23rd of August that you've heard me rant about plenty since last year, The Crow reboot and obviously that's got Bill Skarsgård and AFK Twigs whereas this one has the amazing Guy Pearce and Alex Pettifer if you don't know who Alex Pettifer is he was in the Ministry on Gently Warfare which was a Guy Ritchie movie that was out in April it has Henry Harrell, uh Henry Golding, Isa Gonzalez, Alan Richardson oh it's got fuck lots of people in it I don't want to miss anybody. Oh, but anyway, that guy that your movie that was out, and it's the first time I've seen Alex Pettifer in anything. I may have seen him and just not recognise him, but I knew him from Ministry of Ingenuity Warfare, and he played an amazing character. He was very funny, and he was just really, 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 really nice to watch on screen. He was just, his character was very well done. That's I said that about them all, even though I don't have the same enthusiasm for certain people and certain actors, as you know. I thought everybody played their characters well and I thought the movie was very funny and it was it was a Guy Ritchie classic. So instead of going off on a Guy Ritchie tangent, I usually tend to slag that man off too, but he does his own thing and he does it well. And that's all you can really ask for. Like I said, Sunrise is a movie with Guy Pearce and Alex Pettifer and what movie is it similar? Like I said, none other than The Crow. We're already going to be subjected to a remake and reboot of this universe, not by choice, and we are cringing at the thought of the reboot killer that is Bill Skarsgård, who didn't successfully bring it to the levels they were expecting, because we already have an awesome, creepy and sinister Pennywise, and he was brought to life by the amazing Tim Curry, the legend that has been the master of mystery and deception, who can be the Prince of Darkness and a sweet transvestite, and the only Pennywise we ever needed. Sorry, Bill. But he made us never wanting to accept candy from a stranger or follow him down a storm drain. You made us laugh when you were supposed to be chilling us to our very core. Sunrise is another take on the aven avenging the ones you love and the how actions have consequences with a twist. So, like I said, Alex Pettifer and Guy Pearce. Alex Pettifer is obviously the victim in this. And Guy Pearce is the bad guy. And I love that Guy Pearce. He's always plays amazing characters he's just one of those actors that you know when he's on screen that usually not really much in this case that shit's going to go down he's an enigma really when you see him on screen but this movie i don't think did him justice at all i couldn't get into the way he was trying to perceive this bad guy basically so alex pettifer and guy pierce in this movie it's a horror thriller made in ireland it's supposed to be horror yet i wondered when it would appear but i was actually horrified basically that the movie was the crow reboot that already 
already exists. Instead of just coming back to avenge the death of your love taken too soon, but to turn you into a vampire-like entity to take out all the bad people responsible for the wrong in the town. Not only happened to him, but obviously to other people. So this is similar to what happens in The Crow in Hell's Kitchen. And there's lots of... The original Crow is that they make a complaint about the crime and the drugs and everything like that and they just want something done so that you know they can live in a safe neighborhood and this is similar to what actually is happening in this movie where you've got a crime family and they're thugs basically who have the police in their pocket who people don't challenge and when you do challenge them then they push back and then again like I said actions have consequences if you don't side with them then they will take you take out anyone who gets in their way and this is basically what happens to Alex Pettifer him and his wife end up getting taken out basically by Guy Pearce and his mentalist family basically so like I said Alex Pettifer plays a man who was a police officer in town I think he was like the deputy and his wife they're both killed for not ignoring the criminal activity there is some race issues with Pet- uh, with Pettifer's wife as she's black she's an African American woman and the bad guys hating everyone that they see is different including an Asian family who the gangster Light Preacher played by Pierce has his own rules his family control everything and they do what they want because the police usually do as they say and they also turn a blind eye he didn't and that was seen as you're going to get done and that's it you don't get a warning that's it but similar to the crow Sarah's mum if you can remember she was hanging about with the bad guys and he was trying to get her away from the bad guys and he takes the, blo- uh, the drugs out of her system and tells her to be a mother because a mother is God to children and how Sarah could go down a dark path and she could just be a mother if she just stopped being selfish. This is what Alex's character is like in Sunrise. He's trying to show this family that just get on with your life and to try and do good things. Uh, stick up for yourself, but don't stick up for yourself. It's really like an edge of a sword here because of the small town and you're already an outcast and they see you as an outcast anyway at the start of the film. The woman's husband ends up being killed but they keep saying he disappeared. He didn't, obviously, he didn't do something for Guy Pierce's basically crime family. And he was taken out basically because they don't take any collateral damage, they just take out whoever gets in the way. So they're mourning for that. And Pettifer, Alex Pettifer's character comes back and he ends up staying with that family. And no one really knows who he is as well. So he looks familiar, but he doesn't. The guy likes to be in control of Pierce's character and he doesn't like it when he finds out that the woman has someone living there with him. He likes them to live in fear. He told them to leave if they stayed they were going to be subjected to stuff basically. We have Fallon who is played by Pettifer having memories and hallucination of his wife when she was alive. And again, Eric does this as well. It flashes in the crow of him and Shelley together, him telling her he loves her and uh, him proposing to her in their happy times together before she was killed and before he walks actually in to her, basically, her death. I'm not sure if Fallon knew why he was saved because he also was tied to a tree. This kind of tree looks like a tree of life. His wife is tied to it and she seems to get beaten up and attacked and they get pretty much left there to die. There's crows in the movie as well. Obviously, there's a body, a dead body, that's starting to decay. So obviously, you're going to have, like, vulture-type animals searching to see if, you know, it's safe for them to actually start, obviously, harvesting the meat because it's a circle of life when you think about it. He is saved by this entity. Crows, again, like we said, even though it's not crows, usually it's ravens and things like that. You see a lot in kind of gothic vampire type things. Owls as well. But again, it could be a symbol of the raven being protected. But it's an entity that actually shares his blood or their blood and then will fall and bite them. Because he hands over his wrist, basically, um, for him to feed off his blood. But it's Fallon who bites Reynolds, who is played by Guy Pearce, and turns him mental. And he, again, he tries to avenge. His daughter is killed by one of his own by trying to go after the son from the Asian family in town. And she ends up getting killed. And he literally takes out everybody. Fallon takes out everybody uh, who is involved with his demise and his wife's demise. And again, it's just very similar to how Eric goes about his old haunts and takes out everybody who caused 
the pain and the death of Shelley and himself and for them to not be together living their life and then at the end basically he gets to be with Shelley it just kind of ends the movie after like everything and it didn't really have the same energy as the movies that I've seen Guy Pearce in before I do like Alex Pettifer and I like I enjoyed the fact that they kind of had him in a trench coat like coat as well not that it was supposed to be anything like the crow but it literally is a trench coat they have them in and it's actually similar to a coat that march phillips wore in ministry of ungenuinely warfare one of those kind of coats it was disappointing in the movie but an awakening the fact that um it's obviously an avenged an avenging love story and actions have consequences like the crow and it's weird that they're both out in 2024 and they are both the same movie so but one is based in ireland and one is based in fuck knows where they're basing it so out of five i give it one and a half and this is for the acting of the cast that are that are not the big stars they are obviously they done very well with what they were doing but i felt really disappointed in guy pierce the cat his character he's usually awesome but he was terrible. It felt really forced and not like him. And he's played bad guys before and he's had no problem. And it's bad, smart guys. And this one just felt like he was just overqualified and he just didn't care. So I didn't get the same love and the same charisma and the same kind of spirit that he brings to a character. The story, again, rip off. They're all rip offs, the avenging stories, but again, they're very similar and out quite close together. I found it very repetitive and quite slow. And then before you know it, it started to speed up and then it felt like the the ending was rushed because it kind of jumped about. It was kind of like cagey for me. It was very dark and moody, seeing as it was filmed, like I said, it was filmed in Ireland, less Hell's Kitchen, more spooky derelict woods and moors. Watch Sunrise and see for yourself how similar it is to The Crow and see why I was confused that the version of Eric played by Alex Pettifer in this adaption by Andrew Bale, does he realise he just brought it brought to the attention to everyone that Hollywood regurgitates stories and it's always the same. This is what we want to step away from before the fans start looking elsewhere for the thrills and storytelling on the big screen. Stop before it's too late. Why is Hollywood so lazy? Please, anyone looking for a future in creating characters and worlds, just create something from the heart. Broaden your horizons. Look into lore. Create a whole civilization. Think outside the fucking box. The time is now. Save us from this shit going forward. If you like content like this, remember to go out to check out our Confessions from the Dark Side social media platforms, which is Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Amazon Music, Spotify, and Buzzfeed. Right, let us know what you think over on our social medias and let us get chatting about this topic all the topics let's grow our community and spread how awesome the horror community is if you want to get to know us as individuals then you can go check out on our, our links below i'm darcy darkness i have a youtube a twitch and instagram under behind the mash reviews and Lunar has a YouTube, a Twitch and an Instagram and he's Lunar, Lunar X Rising. And if you need to reach out to us at any point, you can reach out, reach out to us by email. You've got confessions from the dark side at gmail.com for the channel. And if you want to speak to us personally, then you have Darcy at behind the mash reviews at gmail.com. The spelling is on screen. Yes, it's difficult. I created it and I am not sorry. And Lunar is Lunar X Rising at gmail.com. And that was Confessions from the Dark Side presents remakes of reboots. And is that a thing? Is that still a thing? Stop, look, listen, save us, and I'll see you in the next one. And I'm Darcy Darkness. Later.